Ta-da! So now I'm recording on my side. Okay. Uh, and hopefully you're recording on your side. And if you want a recording of this, if yours doesn't work for whatever reason, let me know and I'll just shoot it over to you. Yeah, if you could just email it to me, that would be great. In just happy, in case. Happy to. Happens all, all right. Time. So unfortunately, I cannot show you because we have minors in here. I can't like put them on the screen for you. Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's just, you know, rules. That That's fine. We had to but go can through they, can some... they see? Can they see me? No. Yes, they can see you. Oh, You're God. on the smart board at the front of the room. And um, are, th are they in there right now? We had to go through special permission slips and everything. Oh, just, oh God. You know. So who? So, how many? How many people am I talking to? Um, this is a smaller class. It's all upperclassmen. We've got we've got seven people in here. Okay, cool. It's so upperclassmen, so I can't say like "Hello, little hobbits." Can't do yeah. it. It's, it's actually an environmental science class. Uh, really, we focus a lot on um, just energy and the earth in general. Got it. Um, we also are involved with the school recycling program, and um, we're going to be going to a landfill here next week on, yeah. as a field trip. But um, anyway, we got into uh, with one of our first units. We talk about the scientific method, and we talk yeah. about um, just basically different sciences and different sciences that are considered fake sciences which sure. flat earth is considered a fake science by traditional you oh, know of course means yeah and so uh that's how we got on this tangent you yep. know and um we basically discovered you and things just blossomed from there <laughs> and thank you so, to whatever the, i can't remember the name of the student that uh that started the ball, ball rolling on this yeah aj aj, AJ is, is he in there he is in here. Hey, yes. AJ. Thank you. <laughs> it's usually, believe it or not, it's half and half. Half time when I when I do schools, it's half time that students that start it. And the other half is uh, teachers. This is the first behavioral science class I've done. Um, most of the time, it's general science or um, sometimes sociology or sometimes uh, psychology. The environmental science, not Envi behavioral. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Environmental yeah. science. My yeah. life. Yeah, I stand corrected. All right, cool. That's awesome. So oh, yeah, we wait. do. Sorry, one more, one more thing, really quick. What, what state is this? I don't even know. Missouri, Missouri. Okay. Yes, we are near central Missouri. Got it. So, Got it. All right. it's a very small rural school. Um, we have a population of what, five hundred kids, K through twelve. Oh wow, that is pretty small. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I come from an island. Up in the yeah. northwest near Seattle, and, and ours was so. Is that considered like a B? Uh, like the what's the classification? Like there's triple A, double A, A. Oh, so we're we do class one, two, three. So we're depending upon the sport or the um, whatever, we're class one or class two. Got it. So, well, well, awesome. That's great. So, what what can I do for you? What what can I well, do? Well, we do you? have a list of questions that the students have put together and. We wanted to make sure that not everything was a gotcha question. Oh, like, wouldn't wouldn't matter. I, we're I gonna don't have care. we do have a few questions for you that are you know questioning. Sure. The nature of it all. Look, I I I do not mind. And by the way, did did part of, was part of this because of the documentary behind the curve? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good, just want to know. Right. Yeah. So. Um, I, I guess we'll just get started here. Um, so we have gathered, we've done some other uh, research about you mm -hmm. beyond just the the documentary. Sure. Uh, just trying to find some, some different things. And we have found that you are also a believer in um, some other non-conventional or unconventional things. Probably. And so some of the students wanted to go down that avenue. Okay. And um, do you believe in, well, first of all, do you consider yourself a religious person? Do you believe in God? I, I do. I'll try to keep my answer. How many questions are there, roughly? Uh, I, we, have, we have several. We have about an hour. Okay, I good. Don't know if right. we're I, I'll try to, to keep, if, if, I start running, if I start running long-winded, please okay. bring me back okay. in. It's like, hey, we got some more questions. Um, 
uh, I was raised in a born again evangelical home. So uh, back in the ugh, eight, dates me back in the eighties. So where church wasn't just a Sunday thing, there was youth group, there was vacation Bible school. I went to Camp Malibu in Canada. Uh, so yes, born born again Christian was how I got into religion. However, I went straight from there into tech and played uh, games for a living. So I was one of the early, early guys that played games for a living. And uh, when you hang out with the tech field, religion and tech don't really go hand in hand. And so I didn't go to church for whew, decades. And then finally, when I got into Flat Earth, that kind of brought me back in because if it was built, then there is a creator or, you know, there was a builder slash creator. And so I still don't go to church on Sundays, but I have a much, much deeper appreciation for religion. Any okay. Of, any of so where that that was that has some branches off of it. So okay. as far as creation of the world, right. do you believe in Big Bang? Do you believe that it was um created by I Right, mean, right, right. I it, it's the it's the time old uh, you know the 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 spin-off questions to this which is do I believe in the Big Bang? Yes. Do I believe the Big Bang just came out of nowhere? No, I believe that something created the Big Bang. And so, you know, because the old question to put back at science, it's like, it's like, well, what was there before the Big Bang? And then the conversation stops because, like, well, there was nothing. It was just a Big Bang. And it's like, OK, well, that's that's the, that's really the, the difference between uh, a lot of our circles and mainstream science, which was science think that the Big Bang was spontaneous. And we say, no, it was created by something. So there you go. Yeah. So is the earth millions of years old or is it just a few thousand years old? Uh, I am not a believer in the very, very young earth. And the, the so, so do I think it's thousands of years known, years old? No. Do I think it's potentially millions of years old? Yes. Billions? Eh, maybe. But the, re the big reason for that is our civilization and even mainstream kind of acknowledges this kind of which is we're not the first people to rent this apartment, meaning uh, there are ancient civilizations that remnants that go way beyond. Remember, our unbroken history only goes back roughly 5,000 years. But then you've got the sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, uh, Bimini Road, the pyramids, which no one likes to date, uh, the Bosnian pyramids, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, and so on and so on. So do I think there were other civilizations before us? Yes. So we go back as far back as they go. Okay. Oh, so if the world is millions of years old, do you believe in dinosaurs, evolution? I believe in, oh boy, that's a tough one. Um, I believe, that, do I believe that there were other species? And again, what was it? What do they say? Like 90% of all species that, that roamed the earth are now gone. You know, we, we lose some every year. Um, do I believe that dinosaurs are around? I do. But I don't believe, as far as the, the carbon dating system goes and the evolution part, I think it's way, way off. Um, evolution, I'm not a big believer in, and I'll give you one quick example. Uh, you probably know, heard of this, the coelacanth fish. It's one of my favorites, uh, C-O-E-L-C-A-N-T-H, a really ugly fish. You know, it's years ago, it was like, oh, no, it's absolutely, um, it's been extinct for 70 million years, right? And then the British Navy finds one off of uh, South Africa and then another one off of Mozambique and then another one off of Mo uh, Madagascar. And it turns out National Geographic swims with them on a regular basis all over Africa. Well, OK, well, you every scientist in the world, every single one would have bet the farm and said that thing has been dead for at least 70 million years. How'd they get it so wrong? Right. It's because no one bothered to, you know, to 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 look deeper into the science. It's like, yeah, you could be missing something. So when people say, Let me, I'll do a follow up for you, I guarantee it's not on your question which is so when people say do you believe in the Loch Ness monster I go why wouldn't I and and I go why don't you and it's like well because it's been extinct for at least 100 million years I go you mean like that fish over there so you're dead wrong about that fish absolutely wrong but you're pretty solid on on that there's no you know aquatic dinosaurs still swimming around the deep water lakes of the world and it's not just Loch Ness by the way there's all sorts of deep water you know lakes that are so anyway no carbon dating evolution not a big fan some, some okay. big, hole, big holes in there. Okay. So I'm going to jump to something else. Um, a student wanted to know if you were the oldest, youngest, or middle child. 
Older. They have a theory. They have a personal theory about, you know, oh, where where children. I where I fall. Um, yes, no, I am. I am the oldest by uh, eleven months. Uh, there's only two kids in my family, uh, my myself and my sister, and uh, so we were both in school basically at the same time. And no, okay. oldest. Yeah, I'm going to try to just jump it from from more serious questions to more. You know, oh, no. Whatever. keep it Whatever keep it going. Yep. Um. So. The earth is flat. Yep. Um, how deep is the earth? Ah, that is, a, that is a wonderful question. All right. So let me show this really fast for the class. Hopefully they can see this. So I, and again, you know, you go online and look this up all day long. This is generally the model we, we look. Um, when it comes to depth, if obviously this isn't a scale, we don't know how deep the earth is because mainstream science doesn't know how deep the earth is. Meaning... Mainstream science will say, well, it's 4,000 miles down to the center of the earth. And I go, okay, that's great. Because so what's what's the deepest probe you've ever sent down? You know, is it is it 2,000 miles? Is it 1,000? Is it 100? Is it 10? No, it's not even, it's barely even eight miles, if that, uh, or 12 kilometers. And uh, for whatever reason, they can't get past that. So when somebody says, how thick is the earth? You know, it's like, what's down there? It's like, we don't know. what Mainstream science doesn't know what's down there. And in fact, you can go on Wiki and they'll say, well... The, you know, in the small print, it's like, it's like, well, we really don't know. We're just kind of basing, you know, what's down there as far as the layers go on uh, geologic things like volcanoes and crap like that. But every cutaway, you know, every cross section, which you grew up with and I grew up with, shows those pretty bands, right? You know, the the red and orange and yellow and, and white center. It's like, wow, each of them are like a thousand miles thick. How'd you come up with that? And they just did. And if you look in the really old textbooks, it said, you know, it says on the page where that cross section is. It's like, well, we're kind of extrapolating on based on what. But then they just removed that. And now it's considered gospel. Not to use that word too lightly. Anyway, go ahead. So so lava and things of that sort, you, you kind of went into it with volcanoes. Right. Um, I, there are just beds of lava under there. Or where does the lava come from? Or yep. If if all the world's a stage, okay, but yeah, you know, I won't hold up the model again. You guys know what the model looks like. Uh, you know, basically a giant snow globe with a shallow dome. If all the you know, all, if all the world's a stage, Shakespeare said that, then everything is artificial, and including you know everything that has to do with the oceans, and yes, everything that has to do with volcanoes. Who, whatever's melt, I know that's one of the weaker points. People don't like hearing that. It's like. But at the same time, what do we do in stage production? We create fire and 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 all all the time. And by the way, we can molt, you know, we can melt rock. It's how we make cars. But on the larger scale, and by the way, sorry, let me back up one second, which is we had nothing to do with the building of this place. The engineering of this place is far, far beyond us. But yes, volcanoes and everything else are just artificial, including everything in the sky. Okay. Now, um, one of the uh reasonings that was used to help explain that the earth was flat on right. the documentary was that um i can get a telescope if, if a ship were to leave out to sea and i could right. get a telescope and i could see the ship out there right i shouldn't be able to see it if it went around the curvature of the earth right uh, you, you know i understand what i'm yes what i'm pulling from yeah so i had a student say if that was the case, then why would I not also be able to use the telescope to see the sun at night when the sun is in another location of the per earth? Perfect. Okay. Um, when it comes to this, and I'm, I'm glad you went to the sun because the boats thing would have taken a while to explain. But when it comes to the sun, again, the reason why, all right, when you look up the diagrams of flat earth online we have to show the sun and the moon at least to show them where they are but they are drawn way out of scale compared to our model because we say they're so small compared to the the earth that you'd barely even see and they'd be barely a pixel you know because the sun and the moon would be roughly we'll just average it out say 50 miles wide both of them you know identical same size which is why they fit in front of each other at that size the light that is admitted by the sun can only travel so far. And what I'm getting at is the sun, even if the sun was only 50 miles wide, you'd be like, wow, you'd still be able to see it from really, really far away. I'd be like, well, no, because the atmosphere has a thickness to it. You remember what we're breathing in right now, what you and I are looking in is, is not nothing, right? It's not a vacuum. It's 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. We'll take out the trace gases for now. 
and which means there's a thickness to it, which means compounded over distance, it gets thicker and thicker to where why you can't see um, certain objects at certain. It's why one of the follow up questions that be, if that was true, why can't you use a really big telescope? And why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because it's the highest point. It's like, well, it's the thickness of the atmosphere. It's no different than uh, if you know anybody that scuba dives. When you get down to like 200 feet, you cannot ever, ever see the sun because the sun cannot penetrate through 200 feet of water. It just can't. Uh, the atmosphere, what we're breathing in is really just a thin version of water. It's a soup. It's a fog that we just can't see. So short version of the sun, even the sun cannot penetrate that. A very, very small sun, would it get us off into the distance? It just goes away and there's not enough energy in that sun to punch through hundreds and hundreds of miles of atmosphere. So it just fades away. We've got some wonderful videos on this, by the way, where the sun gets to a certain point in the sky. You know, if you have a filter and zoom in, the sun sits there for a while and then just, just evaporates. You know, it has not gone below the horizon. It's like, oh, well, there you have it. But to the naked eye, you don't know any different. It's, it's genius engineering, whoever built this place. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. So uh, the sun is, even, even though it's, it's small, very small. It, it, it still has the energy to create. So the sun is still the source of our heat and things of that. Sort. Well, or is lot, it different? A lot of our heat, but not all of it. And you you know some of this. Um, between, between if again, if it was artificial, you could compensate for the heat with one, the jet stream, uh, two, the underwater conveyor system, which I'm sure you guys get taught about every once in a while, you know, the, the massive heat and energy transfer of all the oceans, which is a wonderful pattern. And if you lay that out on an AE map and, and as a methyl equidistant map, it absolutely is, is, is beautiful to watch. Um, and then the underground systems, again, the thermal systems that we use for volcanoes between all four of them. Yeah. Everything works just fine. And the sun, it, it takes a lot of pressure off the sun. Otherwise the sun would probably have to be a lot hotter. So is the sun flat or is it a, is it round? I believe it's spherical. And by the way, we don't, we don't use the word round because uh, technically, you know, round is two could be two dimensional, like a dining room table or yeah. a dinner plate and stuff like that. So like your say, model, your model right. is round. I, the, I understand what you're saying. There you go. Yeah. yeah. We, we say sphere or ball or globe, but that's good. That means that mean that lets me know you are not on our side. The, um, uh, so is the sun three dimensional? Yeah, I would think, I think it would be now. Could it be a, just a really, really b bright projection? Possibly. I mean, if you take a magnifying glass to sunlight and you see that pinpoint on the ground, the pinpoint in the ground looks pretty spherical and it's extremely bright, even though it is just a magnified image from something else. So, but I, I'm a, I'm a 3d guy. So I, I think it's 3d. Sure. Okay. Um, you, so you mentioned, I'm not on your side or whatever well you know how not many, not not in a bad way I, I know i know i know but how here's a question how many are on your side do you estimate um, how many people belong to your organization like i assume there's an official organization well there is and there isn't because there's so much peer pressure from friends and family and co-workers it's you know I, I don't want to use necessarily lightly the term in the closet or out of the closet but it's true I mean, I have talked to, we have, short version, we have millions, millions and millions of people. I've got a wonderful celeb list, which is on my channel uh, on a playlist of, of people that, that came up. But for every one of those, there are so many that I have talked to who won't come out of the closet. They can't. And they, and they said, look, like, like um, uh, with uh, Kyrie Irving, for example, you know, the basketball player, when he came out, the media just uh, came after him and, and attacked him as, as, you know, and so when any celeb comes out and, a lot of celebs will say like, well, they've said, oh, yeah, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, I, I can't do what he did. You know, that's that's a bad that's a bad thing. Th that'll be on Kyrie forever. So there are. I can't tell you how many millions of are because we don't we don't know simply they just won't. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like the app that we have, you know, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app that we made uh, just just the blue dot section is at 200,000 which is pretty good considering these are people it's like oh yeah i'm certifiable you know put here put put my pin on the chart but we have i mean can't tell you can't tell you how many you know what there's a there's a great quote i'll give you i'll give you an example and you'll be able to extrapolate from this uh travis kelsey you know the the guy that's dating taylor swift mm -hmm. he was interviewed uh recently and they asked him about the flat earth thing he goes dude you have no idea he goes if you took an anonymous poll he goes he goes of any locker room 
He goes, at least 15% of every locker room. It's freaking flat earth. He goes, I don't know why, he, but, but I know none of these people, right? None of these people have called me, right? So if you imagine, let's say, let's say it's conservatively, let's knock it down to 10. Let's say 10% of the population. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. And there's some wonderful polls that kind of said that. Now, out of those 10%, less than 1%, it will admit it to you now. But anyway, that's a long way. Would you end. say would you say that the majority of flat earthers live in the United States? Not the majority, but would you say that a higher percentage of flat earthers live in the United higher States? Per, yeah, higher percentage per capita live in the United States. However, that's not necessarily true. All the English speaking countries, uh, because our uh the app cover it's it covers it worldwide. Uh, all the English speaking countries, there's a higher percentage, no question. And I think that's mostly because a lot of the content that's being created, the, the bulk of the content is English speaking. So everything from Europe to England to South Africa, Australia, uh, New Zealand, places like that uh, are now there's con other countries in Europe that aren't English speaking. But since English is what the the second, the, the world's second language, you know, we, we pick up a lot of people there. So. Hopefully Do you think helps. that that's related to uh, Americans' um, skepticism or lack of trust in their government compared to other countries? Um, I think it's because that's a good question. I, I think it's because America tends to run with things that are controversial on a regular basis. Uh, the BBC, it, British newspapers love running American stories because we're, you know, we're the crazy cousins. That are out there. All the, I mean, come on. Most of the great conspiracies of the world are American based, and I'm not going to rattle them off here for for obvious reasons. But you can look them up. I mean, find me one. Find me a great, interesting conspiracy that's not tied to America in some way, other than say, uh, well, I mean, the pyramids are a great one, of course. But like the Titanic, which is British based. You know, the Titanic Olympic conspiracy and how that rolled up. If you guys want to look into something fun, look at that one, which is just basically a, a, a case of insurance fraud. Anyway, go ahead. Actually, but, I, but, I did have a student that wanted to know about the Titanic. Oh, yeah. But um, Look up the Olympic. You, Sorry, go ahead. Do you believe, so if we are in a contained system, yeah. I guess I'm using the proper term, terminology there that we're in this dome, so we're in a contained system. Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? I do, but I but I had to revise that after I got into Flat Earth. I was a big believer in, um, I grabbed some, somebody recommended to me kind of 10 years ago, he goes, grab some night vision binoculars and start looking at the sky. And I was in Colorado when I was, when I was doing that and, you know, wonderful clear skies to look at on a regular basis. And there was, there's all sorts of stuff flying around there. That's not us. The question is, where are they from? So before I got into flat earth, I'd say, oh, sure. You know, other planets, other galaxies, you know, your basic sci-fi trope. But now I believe they're just older versions of us, meaning the remnants of, you know, our, if our civilization only goes back 5,000 years and all those places I listed, those civilizations, I think if they developed um, unified field technology, then they would have flying craft. So do I think there's things flying around? Yes. Do I think they're from Mars and Jupiter and Venus? No. No, I don't. I decide. The only the only question, the follow-up question that would be, are they in here with us? Are they stuck inside this snow globe with us? Or are they, are they in other snow globes and they can transfer back and forth? I kind of go with the, the, the earlier one, which is I think they're just stuck in here with us. So. Okay, so... You were saying something about time. Are there there are remnants of us? So do you think that it's, you think that there's time continuums as well, or that there are different parallels of time? Um, I'm a big, I'm a huge fan of time travel movies and time loop movies. Everything that you know that t was was tied to Groundhog Day in one way or the other. In fact, I just watched one last night, which I'd never seen before. Um. <laughs> It's it's okay, but it kind of kind of gets muddled after that. Once you start going down that road, it's like okay, now we're gonna go into some sort of cinematic universe issue. So I try to stick with one world at a time. So do but I do do I think that time can be fractioned, and do I think it's possible you can have parallel timelines? Oh sure, why not? But we haven't seen it here, nor have we seen any weird. I mean, other than the Mandela effect, we haven't any seen anything super weird along those lines. But I do believe in the Mandela effect, by the way. Okay. Um, plate tectonics. Do continents move around? Yes. 
Sure. Okay. And and they work just fine on a, on on a big flat model like that as well. So is is the Earth growing or expanding? I don't think it's doing either. I think that again, if it's a if it's a static system like this thing behind me, then uh, it's it's not. Now, do I think the the plates could be grinding on their own? Yeah, that's a wonderful little thing to throw in there, which is but you know everything, all, all the the geologic conflict that could be going on. Oh, that's a wonderful wrinkle to throw. Okay. In. Earth, I was Earth. just trying to, I was trying to make sense of if the plates are moving, yeah, but we're in this flat you know how are they moving how are they moving without growing or expanding where is this you know is there uh if they're spreading apart or you know some of them are pushing against each other but how do you how do you how, explain how do you or allow off? room for all of that on a uh, flat surface if they were sitting on top of a magma or semi pyroclastic you know, system where, where, you know, it wasn't completely molten all the way around. I don't know. Exactly. I mean, I'm not, by the way, I'm not shy of saying, I don't know. It's a good question. No one's ever asked me exactly uh, how you'd pull that off. I mean, it could be done, you know, with, with anything on, on a flat surface, you could do just about anything you could think of underneath, but moving around the plates, all you'd have to do is set them on an unstable system and then give them a jostle from time to time. It'd be artificial, of course, but it, it could be done. And again, it's a it's a it's a wonderful unstable wrinkle to add to the system, you know, like Vesuvius or Krakatoa, not just the volcanoes, but but I mean, come on, the the San Andreas. Uh, what's the one out in near you guys near um, Memphis? There's a there's a big yeah, fault. it's the the uh, Madrid. Yeah, yeah, the Madrid system. In our circles, the Madrid yeah. system comes up a lot. People say, oh no, San Andreas. It's like I don't know. The Madrid system seems pretty pretty rocky. Yeah, so, yeah. We, um, we've never, ex I mean, we have never felt anything like that in our lifetime. Um, you know, there's been a few sh small rumblings, but nothing that we have felt up, you, you know, you know, our way. you just made me think I that just had a novel thought. Um, one of the things earthquakes would do on a regular basis is shake down the old structures, which is, you know, like the, the one, of the big reasons like the pyramids of Giza still are standing is because they are coincidentally in one of the most stable geologic zones in the world but all the other seven wonders of the world you know all those everything else you you throw a earthquake you know it doesn't even have to be a big one every i don't know 50 100 years 200 years you could knock down just about anything which is why i'm going to be kind of sad like after our civilization's gone you'd think like one of the only things that would survive wouldn't be in dc it'd be like mount rushmore and it'd be like yeah but you throw enough earthquakes at mount rushmore it wouldn't last long you might get a face left uh, hopefully Okay, so this one is also kind of what do you think? Yeah. Climate change. Um, do you believe that the Earth's climate is changing? Yes. If so, is it because of man? Yes. Or, I, I and, do. Go ahead. Okay. So what causes climate change in your model? All right. As far as because with with our model or what I say our but traditional model, yeah. you know, we have an atmosphere that the sun is trapping greenhouse gases in our atmosphere or right. the sun isn't trapping them, but you understand where I'm going. Right, right, right. The, yes, I do. In fact, so people have been asking me that since the beginning. It's like, do you believe in climate change? And, and it's weird. I, other people don't for whatever reason, because of the whole, you know, that, that things are going around. So oh, climate change is a myth. And I actually say that sarcastically from time to time. I was like, Oh no, no, no. China, in fact, in our model, China, climate change is way more real and way more magnified um, because what you were saying, like, you know, the, the gravity, which we may get into, uh, you know, keeps the greenhouse gases in. Right. And in our model, well, it's an actual greenhouse it makes more sense because, you know, it's a solid structure the whole air pressure thing, which hopefully is a question. Maybe it's not. Um, which is, is it man-made and how has it happened? Well, okay, take well, the greatest invention uh, in the history of mankind, uh, I'll debate it with anybody, is the internal combustion engine, which is basically a furnace. That's all it is. You could you could retrofit, and I'm sure people have, you could take just even a four-cylinder, six-cylinder engine, retrofit it to a furnace in your house, and it would heat your house up just fine, you know, provided you had the filters and make sure you didn't poison yourself with carbon monoxide, that sort of thing. So the, the thing is, if you've got, I don't know, let's say we'll round 
down. We'll say there's like 800 million internal combustion engines running at any given time in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Constantly. That's a lot of heat. And so the, the analogy I like to give is, let's say you're in a minivan, right? And somebody comes in with a little propane lantern, one of those little ones that holds, right? Well, the, the air conditioning system is going to have to compensate for that one propane lantern, right? Now, you bring in two propane lanterns and all of a sudden the air conditioning system, doesn't matter how hard it works, it's going to create some new hot spots and new cold spots that weren't there before. It's going to it's going to change the weather in that van, how it works. Throw enough, you know, again, you just keep adding more and more. And yes, uh, so going back to the artificial system that this is, if this is an artificial system, basically a giant minivan, then how long can you keep pumping um uh, not, not who cares about the greenhouse the gases just the raw thermal heat of all those engines before the system tries to compensate for it it can't get rid of the engines can't make them disappear so it's going to but in that process the weather will change and so i mean you've seen it i've seen it and hell we have another um hurricane coming towards florida this week apparently that's not good it's early in the season it's it is not a is not a good year for weather and we've it's not just been this year it's been a whole bunch of years and uh, people can downplay it all they want, but you've seen the trend where, uh, you know, the warmest, I mean, the the movie Inconvenient Truth and all the, the subsequent documentaries after that really resonated with me. It's like you can't hide the highest temperatures in all these places year after year after freaking year and then keep, keep saying that climate change is a myth. I know the oil and gas industry. I know they don't like talking about it, but at the same time, they really shouldn't be worried because people are not going to stop driving. The, they're not. And you can you can talk about I don't want to go off on a rant here. You can talk about electric cars all you want, but electric cars have severe limitations to them, severe limitations. And there's only so many people that can get them. And there's certain classes that are never going to be able to get them. You're not going to get them for big ships. The military is not going to use electric tanks, uh, electric planes. Good luck with that. And so on and so on and so on. So it's kind of a push either way. Sorry, it's my mini rant on climate change, guys. No, <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Um, So. You, you mentioned, and I, I don't want to like take your words out of context or anything of that sort. I think that I understand you saying that like planets and things of that sort are, you didn't, you didn't use the word illusion, but well, no, you, I'll say it lights on a ceiling. Okay. So comets and such all. Yep. yep. Every falling every stars, um... falling stars. All right. First off, uh, I know you kids are, are young and you've probably never been to a planetarium because planetariums aren't cool. I would take them to a planetarium before I take them to a landfill, but I know it's your field. And so landfill is actually a pretty good idea because it's that whole shock and awe thing. But planetariums are very, very interesting because you lie on your back and they put the sky on the ceiling. And depending on where you go, it, if it's a good planetarium, it looks really realistic. So the 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 first part is when people say, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I saw the moons of Jupiter through my telescope. It's like, oh, great. And we'll take you to the planetarium here. Can you see Jupiter? Yes, I can. Can it does it look spherical? Yes, it does. Can you land on it? No. Well, why not? Because it's just lights on a ceiling. Right. When you get out of that planetarium, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger one? I mean, the Truman Show was a wonderful movie to, in that regard. Granted, it was fictional and the the dome they built was only 20, 20 miles wide. But still, pretty pretty neat. And a grant, yeah, it was a fake thing. But when it comes to comets, that one's a little trickier, but at the same time, not impossible. Because I, what I find interesting about comets, especially meteors, is yeah, you see craters every once in a while on the ground, and old ancient craters, you know, which you see in in various deserts and bodies of water, and that six billion smartphones out there, right? Find me a video of anything from coming from sky to ground, ever. It's amazing. It's it's like never happened. It, no one no one ever shows it. It's like and get remember if if it's mostly water, then three quarters chance it's going to land in the water anyway. No one took a picture of anything from a beach, from a cruise boat, from the navy. No no one's taken a picture of anything hitting the freaking water from the sky or anything hitting the ground. Why not? Right. If it's an artificial system, you'd want to minimize those as much as possible. Now, do I think there's something solid coming from the sky? Possibly. I mean, if you're going to do that. It'd be like a friend told me it'd be like throwing little little pebbles into an aquarium, right? Uh, some sort of rail gun technology, uh, mineral ore, let the atmosphere burn it up with friction. Make sure you don't aim at any major cities, which again, which is also another thing. In all the history of anything, 
no town has ever gotten hit by you know a basketball sized meteor kind of kind of weird but th at the same time we've got these massive craters in different places and i know your argument would be like well you only need one it's like yeah but even the small ones should hit eventually oh i'm sorry one more so one more real quick which is like there's regular meteor showers right like at a yearly basis like was the perseus meteor shower no satellites are ever retasked to get out of the way no meteor has ever hit any any sort of satellite and spun it out of control because you know that uh, when that if that goes systemic then it turns into the movie um gravity which isn't that old with sandra bullock which was the whole concept of that movie was that a satellite got hit spun around hit other satellites and then all this wall of jagged metal was was flying through the sky why hasn't that happened yet when's the last time i read a story ever about anybody's satellite getting knocked out by a rock of any size it never happens sorry there you go well, so do I understand you correctly that you don't believe that satellites are real? I believe that I believe they are real, but do I believe they are suspended that they go up there and they're suspended by nothing that are sent up by rockets? No. In fact, you can look it up. These are not, these are videos not even classified. The biggest consumer of helium in the world is NASA. They're not shy about it. And they send up rockets, or sorry, not rockets, but payloads. Remember, with it's not like weather balloons where they, they can go up and they get to a certain height, they just explode and the things fall down. NASA can keep those things up there for a long, long time by regulating the helium. And they can send payloads up of four tons. In fact, there was a wonderful story, great video, where they because they launch them from everywhere. They do, what, like a couple hundred a day from different parts of the world. And there was this four-ton satellite, four tons, right, 8,000 pounds, the wind caught it and it ran into an SUV and just destroyed it. And then, of course, they had to scrap the whole thing because the satellite was damaged. The satellites that are up there are most of them are suspended. That That's all it is. But even those that are up there don't carry most of the bandwidth. And everybody knows this in the telecommunications industry. The 95 percent of the bandwidth that you're working on in your phones right now are still from undersea cables, which you know started out as telegraph, then went to telephone, then finally went to fiber optic because, you know, they just use the old lines and they just ran the, the cables under the water. And then it's compensated with cell towers. That's it. So the the stuff that's used with satellite is very, very limited, very limited bandwidth. So there you go. Satellites exist, but they don't do what they think you do. They do. And they don't look like you. they think you like. Again, Google pictures of satellites from space. You should see tons of them all the time. Almost all of them are artist conceptions. Nobody's taken a picture of another satellite from a satellite. The space station's never done it. Sorry. I ramble. No, you're fine. Um, is there anything under the Earth? No. Well, other than the, perhaps the the artificial systems that are controlling whatever's underneath uh, the Earth, you know, the thermal systems, the 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 uh, the magma systems, and possibly the water. But again, that goes kind of like the depth of it, which is if we can't go down, if mainstream science can't go down further than eight miles, we don't know. You know mm -hmm. exactly what's down there because you don't know what's down there, even though you say you know from you know, and and don't be, anyone says, Oh, we got ground penetrating radar. It's like, Yeah, sure, you do. Sure, you tell me how far down that goes. Because when they were when the Russians and the Germans were drilling those big holes, you know, uh, to try to get down there, every time they tried to guess, it's like, Okay, this is the layer we're going to go through. It they were wrong every single time. It's like, Oh, we're going to hit water. Nope, we're going to hit gravel. Nope, we're going to hit you know. You know, hard, hard rock. Nope. Just kept screwing it up every time. So, yeah, when you watch movies like The Core, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. And you do, well, I I know that you don't, um, you're not speaking on behalf of every flat earther, obviously. You all, everybody has different concepts or different ideas. But do you personally believe that there are other uh other systems outside of our system i believe in that because why wouldn't you uh if meaning not only are we not the first people to rent this apartment but why would it be a one-off meaning if this worked really well again whoever i know one of the follow-up questions might be who built it and that would be um either an advanced civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves or the divine but at that point you're splitting hairs aren't you because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity you know, if a golden spaceship landed tomorrow in the middle of kansas right the first thing you you'd have two groups of people one would be the nerds be like oh wow they do look like the people from avatar and the other people would be like we must worship the blue people right it, it's weird how how the human mind works 
but um, no, so short version. Uh, uh, I think there are other versions of this out there. Why wouldn't you in various stages yeah. of advancement? Okay. Do you think people can reach the ice wall? The average civilian, no. And when, sorry, the, for someone that didn't know what we were talking about there, um, meaning can, and the ice wall is not the coastline of Antarctica. Now, granted, there is a wall of ice where the water meets most of Antarctica, sure. And Antarctica is an unusual continent because even mainstream science says the whole thing sits, the average height is at 14,000 feet, which is amazing, really, considering altitude kicks in at, what, half that, 7,000 feet. So do I think the average person can do it, can make it to the uh, to the edge? You know, so the Antarctic coastline starts here. How many thousand miles is it until you run into the barrier? You'll say, let's just say it called the edge of the snow globe. Um, we don't know. The United States Navy tried for 30 years before I think they ran into it, which meant it took a long time and, and they, it must be in, inland a, a long, long way. But the Antarctic Treaty makes sure you're never going down there. The Antarctic Treaty, which was ratified in 1959, the only unbroken treaty in the history of the world, right? And and remember, this was in 1959. They said, oh, yeah, no one can go down there except for the military. No country can own any land down there. Military, military scientists only. And it's not up for review until 2041. Well, 2041 is not that long from now, but they're just going to kick the can down the road. Nobody's going down there. Um, you can now, can you spend $15,000 and go down there and get your picture taken in an orange raft next to some penguins on the coastline. Sure. But to go in the interior, the permit process is amazingly difficult to go into the interior and the money is non-refundable and you have to have multiple countries sign off on it. By the way, a side note, which nobody wants to talk about, it was like, how is there a piece of real estate in this world that's not owned by anybody? Everybody owns every square inch of land that there is, except for Antarctica. The entire continent is not owned by anybody. And nobody even, sorry, one more thing. Nobody even protests this, right? And, and, as far, and think of this. I don't know what it's like where you are, but um, the oil and gas companies, which are massive, right? Go gobs of liquid cash. They could start fracking in your neighbor's backyard tomorrow if they wanted to, right? These same companies, which have unlimited resources, unlimited political influence, they can't even talk about Antarctica. That's the part, the, one of the big flags that went up for me. It's like these same companies, it's like the Antarctic Treaty is so bulletproof. They can't even run full page ads in newspapers. They can't go to politicians. When's the last time you saw a politician say, hey, we should start re doing resources in Antarctica? No one, no one talks about it. Okay. Give me just a moment here. Drew, will you lock my door so the next hour doesn't come in? We have a little bit of overlap here. I was hoping, I, I'm wanting this to end around 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, but I have another class that is going to be trying to come in the door before oh. too long. Okay. And I have another place for them to go. The one, that one. Yeah. Um, so um, let me find where I was here. What point in your life did you come to the, how did you get introduced to flat earth and how long did you study it before you converted? It. Yeah. And, uh, what was going, was there anything going on in your life? Um, how old were you? Just general kind of your Got personal it. okay history with this. Re real, and the documentary was true to this point, which was I was 46. I was between tech companies because I was doing tech startup out in Boulder, Colorado. And because I never got married or had kids, I had a lot of free time on my hands. And I went through just about every conspiracy you could think of, went down every rabbit hole you could think of and was really, it was like, I, all right, what haven't I covered? Uh, you know, tons of time to, 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 to go down these rabbit holes and saw flat earth. It's like, oh, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to, because why not? And thought I could turn it into a weekend. So I looked into it in the summer of 2014. And even joined like the Flat Earth Society, like the old school Flat Earth Society. What you see now is like Flat Earth 2.0. It's the social media version. It has nothing to do with the old old groups. And they had nothing to offer me. So um, I looked at it and I looked at it and weeks turned into months, which turned into nine months. And then February of um, 2015, that's when I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, put my contact information out there. I said, OK, YouTube and Internet Hive Mind, tell me where I screwed up. Tell me where because I'm a pretty clever problem solver. 
I could not solve this. I could not solve the globe anymore. It's like, I can't prove the globe. Can't do it. And instead of an academic calling me up right away and said, okay, well, you forgot this, this, you know, everybody else called me, uh, including subject matter experts, all branches of the military, um, air traffic controllers, pilots, uh, you name it. Anyone that's tied to travel in, in some way or form, they, they contacted me and the, um, they, they started you know, saying, okay, you're not crazy and here's why. And they just started adding more to it. I still was holding my breath for six months after that. But yeah, 2015 is when I everything solidified for me to where, yeah, I, I it shouldn't have gone that way. And I was as surprised as anybody when, because why? Out of all the, cons the one conspiracy I don't look at, that's the one that resonated. With, and, and people were treating it like I, like I had discovered it, which was weird. It's like, what are you talking about? It's like, this isn't anything new, right? You can type in ancient cosmologies into Google and click on images and you'll see the the old, every culture you can think of drew the same thing for thousands of years. So, but maybe it was the way I phrased it or, or the way I, I made it easy for people to understand. So there you go. Um, so you said that you went out looking for conspiracies, I guess. Is, yeah. is that how I... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once, once you start, and again, I'm not going to rattle them off for your class for various reasons, but yeah. I, I looked at everything that was alternative. I didn't believe in, I will, I'll list one for you really fast, which was, I didn't believe in conspiracies at all. I grew up on a rural Island uh, near Canada, up in the Northwest. I, I didn't even know there was more than one religion, you know, until I left the Island. It was, I was very sheltered. And so, and then I saw uh, Oliver Stone's movie JFK in the theater with a whole bunch of people packed house. And, it was the first movie I think I walked out of where everyone was 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 shaken. They were worried about this. And it's up until that point, I didn't even think it's like, wait, people in power lie about stuff. I honestly didn't even believe that people, you know, when you get to a certain level of responsibility, you have an obligation not to lie. And then I realized, well, it's wishful thinking. You know, people there's conspiracies in, in every aspect of our lives all the time. People lie for various reasons. Usually it's for the greater good. And uh, so, yeah, that's. Sorry, what was the original question on that? Well, we were just basically, um, you had said oh, that how you I were got looking into it. for other conspiracies or oh, you yeah, were going yeah. through and, conspiracies. Yeah, and, and, and I, I looked at everything else. Again, conspiracies like, you know, do I think the JFK was a lone gunman that was in turn killed by a lone gunman? Probably not. I think there was more to it. But do I think that um, Bigfoot is dating Elvis right now, the ghost of Elvis? No, no, I don't. So that's where you draw the line is Bigfoot. Big Miss Nellis. Well, I mean, but at the same time, look, I can't shoot down. People come to me and they'll say, oh, hey, you know, I, I've got pictures of Bigfoot hanging out with Elvis. I'd be like, you know what? I wake up with Flat Earth every day. So what What leg do I have to stand on? I'll, I'll give you a couple minutes. What do you got? So I can't mm -hmm. laugh at anything anymore. You know, kind of like the, the cold moonlight thing, which I just put out recently, a, a TikTok video which was, I talked about how the moon is generating this cold laser light. I laughed at that and I would have been in flat earth for a year. And okay. Now we did, we did hear about, we did see something about the cold moon. Yeah. Um, explain that because I'm not sure that I, I know what you're referring to. Oh yeah. To. Nobody does. It's it, it hell when it, again, it was brought up to me in um, 2016, which was, he goes, it's so we, if the sunlight, if it's 80 degrees in the sun, it's 70 degrees in the shade. We'll just take 10 degree increment. It's always cooler in the shade, right? But in the moonlight, it's warmer up to 13 degrees more. So the moonlight is 13 degrees colder than the moon shade. It's like, well, how, how does that happen? In fact, if you take a magnifying glass to, to sunlight, you can burn paper. You take a magnifying glass to moonlight, it gets even colder than the normal moonlight, which is cold to begin with. And you can take a, a cheap, $30 point and click uh, engine thermometer, you know, that they sell out there, take nine volt batteries. And we had guys who were running out there uh, immediately. And it's like, there's, this can't be real. And when, and they'll, they'll do it. It's like, why hasn't science ever even talked about this? It's like, I don't know who first noticed it, but it wasn't science. You know, the, it was just probably just some guy. It's like, Hey, it can't be right. You know, and they'll have another drink, but it's true. Um, in fact, there was a wonderful video. I tied it into the little um, TikTok thing that I put on there. Uh, I put the link in the thing. It's like some guy, um, one of our, he wasn't even one of ours, went out there with like a thermal front front viewing camera, predator vision, basically, you know, from, from the predator movie with a temperature gauge in the center, dead center of the crosshairs. And he's shining around on a high, it's, remember the moon's got to be high in the sky, you know, and normally full, you want, you want as much moonlight as possible. He's like, 
I'll be damned. And it's true. I've done it myself. I mean, Grand I only got like four to five degrees. The thing is, why is it going negative at all? And, uh, you know, we've done this with, with water tests, with copper strips. We've done every, every kind of test you can think of, and it's absolutely true. Now, does that prove a flat earth? Nope. Doesn't prove a flat earth at all. But it really gives problems to the whole idea that, this, that the moon is reflecting sunlight. You know, it, at that point, it's like, well, okay, it gives more credence to like the moon is just this small, independent, cool laser nightlight. And I didn't even, honestly, when I first heard it, I didn't even know the cool laser was a thing. You can go on Amazon and type in cool laser. It's, it's, it's part of the beauty par products line. And we've been doing it in universities for decades. The question is, why is the moon generating that sort of light? Weird. Super, super weird. Okay. I have one more question and then we'll probably be wrapping things up. But yeah. can you think of something that these kids can do at home, something that they can uh, – experiment with yeah or something that you have you know hey this is a neat little experiment to try just to make them question and sure. or maybe say, see the flaws of the experiment or yeah. you know things of that sort yeah the the easiest way and again we've got some wonderful videos out there um the, a lot of them are collected in the app it's the the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app but the thing that gets most people in our community, and I had nothing to do with this, uh, it was not part of the clues at all, which is long distance photography, which is if water lays flat, right? And, and if it's if it's there's no weather and it lays absolutely flat, then take any sort of camera that you know decent you know, uh, zoom with decent zoom on it, go to a beach of any kind. I don't care if it's a lake or uh, you know or salt water and shoot, start shooting long distance photography and look at objects in the distance and then figure out what you should be seeing and what you shouldn't be. Now, granted, it's got to be on a calm day because the waves, as you know, um, uh, if, if the waves are even like three foot, four foot waves, it's going to screw you up because like right now, the, the my finger isn't holding my face, right? Because the waves are close to me. But now, you know, waves close to you, it's going to hide everything. So yeah, that's that's what I would do. Long distance photography usually does that because, again, the curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile per mile. Again, that's what mainstream science says, which is eight inches per mile squared. And there's calculators on there. You don't have to remember that math. It's out there, uh, which means that eventually whatever object it is, if it's a globe, should be on the other side of the hill. And we never see it. The only thing that stops our long distance photography is the thickness of the atmosphere itself. That's really what's changed the game, by the way. This conversation we're having right now doesn't happen 30 years ago. Until HD technology came out, um, you couldn't zo you could zoom in and just be this blocky, horrible, pixelated stuff. Didn't matter how much money you spent on a camera. Now you can zoom in, even decent phones, right? It, you can zoom in on a boat that you cannot see with the naked eye, and it comes back into frame. And the whole boat, the entire freaking boat, it's like, how? How is that? How is that possible? And Again, the average person doesn't even think about it because we all know that you know the boats go off, disappear off in the distance. Therefore, they went over the curve. Not anymore, they don't. So that's that'd be the one thing I'd tell people to do. You could do the moon temperature thing, but it's the wrong time of year in America to do it because everything's low on the horizon. Um, the the other stuff is just theoretical. I mean, if you had access, I don't know what you have in their school. You could do little mini vacuum chambers. Have them show them that which is, you know, show what a, what a vacuum can do. I mean, there's videos out there, which again, sorry, one more thing I want to throw out there, which is how if, if a vacuum chamber can't keep, if you had a vacuum chamber above you and you pop it, right, that the air will rush up and equalize instantly, right? It d absolutely blows gravity away. Right? And so when you walk outside, how is the infinite vacuum of space not destroying our atmosphere? It's because it's contained. And you say, well, no, it's because of gravity. I'll go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air from going up into that chamber right above you, that same gravity. And I've had, even had physics students like, well, because there's more, gra oh, more gravity, more gravity outside than there's inside. But be careful about what you're, where you're going there. Anyway, that's what I got. Long distance photography, kids. Okay. I forgot. There is one other question. Oh, what, love of God. What is, what is the dome made of? That's your last question? Yeah. Uh, whatever it is, you can look this up. I Do I know what it is? No, of course not. Um, is it, it because it's dealer's choice, whatever it is, stops atomic weapons, meaning, uh, the atomic testing program, which ran from 19, the aerial part, which ran from 1958 to the beginning of 1962, I believe the Soviet union and the United States, that's all they did. All their testing was straight up for whatever reason, for freaking four years, 
just hitting hitting this thing, which that's your standard what men do, right? It's like they find a barrier. So is it is it a heavy water? Is it a heavy element? Is it a electromagnetic frequency? Is it a unified field? Is it a general force field? Don't know. Whatever it is, though, is very, very strong, keeps the atmosphere so in and keeps other things out. You think the government is trying to find a way to escape the dome? Oh, is I think that... they, tr they, they tried for a long time. Uh, they gave up with atomic weapons in 1962. They uh, tried to use the Heart Project going through the 70s and 80s. And then uh, I think they, they modified CERN. Because if you can't get out a normal route, maybe you can wormhole your way out. Uh, why wouldn't you? That, that, that would be a priority, which is can we get out of here, you know, artificially? Can we get out? Out? Can we defy whatever is keeping us in here? Okay. Is there a way that we can get some autographs? <laughs> sure. Sure. What do you What do you want me? To they're, they're all like doing this number now. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want What do you want me to sign? Uh, I don't know. Does Does it um, have to be an autograph, or you want me to do? Well, do you want me to do anything special, video wise? What do they actually want autographs? I can send autographs. I, I don't know. They They just want something to make them feel special. All I right. Think. All right. Okay. Okay. What I'll do is, um, uh, I'm sorry. Was it AJ? Was that his name? AJ is one. Yes. Okay. Well, no. Have a AJ email me, and mm -hmm. I will. Um, and I'll I'll get the address of where to send them to. If you want me to send it to the school, or if you want me to send it to him, or whatever. And uh, I can I get that request every once in a while, and I'll I'll send him some stuff. Okay. All right. Um. Anything else from those guys? Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> Thank we you, really by the way, for, for, for doing this. I honestly didn't know if um because there's a lot of schools that won't uh that, that won't go down this path. So thank you, by the way, for well, that you know, it's all part of learning. So I, I I I basically stated that you know the students are going to run into people who they disagree with all their lives, and sure. this is part of learning, let, you know. Let, let me end with, with one thing. First, I again don't don't Take every take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not here to convince you or persuade you. I'm just here to put an idea in your head. Yeah. You have to figure it out for yourself. But also, don't forget the uh, um, one of our a mascot that we're working on is the platypus, right? Which is look the the platypus was absolutely a freaky myth. In fact, scientists when they had one crawling around in front of them did not believe it was real. They thought somebody had like man stitched it together, which is horrifying. Right. But it was imp it was impossible. But nonetheless, it was true. So figure it out for yourself. Do your own research. OK. All right. Well, thank you again. And, um, you know, maybe we'll do this again in the future. Well, no. You know, I've, I've done repeat things for, for different classes. I, you know, I try to keep it somewhat light. Uh, if the recording doesn't work on your side, it should. Uh, just remember, it'll it'll tell you where it's going to show up on your computer. Uh, okay. Let me know and I'll, I'll shoot you this one. Okay, I'll be in contact. Okay, thanks. So, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Have a good one. Yeah. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.